welcome back to my channel and today we're going on with sewing 109 which is how to lay out your patterns on fabric now in the previous two videos we covered grain lines you know we did the selvage the cross grain and the bias and now we're going to put that to practical use so let's get started once you have your fabric ready for use you've ironed it it's on the grain and you want to cut first thing there are three three general principles you keep in mind when you are placing your pattern so i have my little miniature pattern here of half a bodice which okay for illustration the first thing is on the fold now i'm not doing any green lines or anything right now i'm just explaining you generally you can place a pattern on the fold you fold your fabric like this you see what i'm doing and I just fold it with the right sides together and then you place the center of your pattern whatever the center is the center of your bodice or in this case this is a skirt piece the center of your skirt you place the center of your pattern on the fold and this is what you do when you have want to have one piece that is symmetrical. For instance, I have this. I move this out of the way. This is one piece that was cut on the fold. So it was like this. Was the center was placed on the fold like that. The center was placed on the fold and it was cut and when you open it up you have one piece so this is how you cut one piece that is symmetrical on both sides now the other thing you can do is to have a double layer which is when you want to have two pieces that are mirrored to each other but are separate so for instance I'll just fold this again in half I still have my right sides facing because when you want to have mirrored pieces the right side should face so in that case simply put my pattern piece and then I'll cut around it this will give me two separate pieces so if I move this out of the way you have something like this you now get two separate but mirrored pieces so this is how you get mirrored pieces the two pieces were cut together from a double layer of fabric if I wanted to cut the same piece twice, I wouldn't put the fabric uh, right side facing. I'll put the fabric on the right, right side facing and wrong side. We'll get to that on another topic. And the third and final way is to cut on a single layer. In this case, I will not fold. I will simply place my pattern on the fabric and cut around it and that will give me one piece now usually you cut something on a single layer of fabric and usually you can see the right side is up you cut something on a single layer of fabric when you only want one piece or the piece is not let's say something weird like this the piece is an odd shape it's not symmetrical on both sides maybe this was one piece of fabric I'll just cut it once and I get one pattern so that is the three general ways on the fold double layer or single layer now let's put those grain lines to practical use now with whether you cut it on the fold on a double layer and single layer you have to cut along one of the grain lines let me remind you on the one hand we have the straight grain or the lengthwise grain which is parallel to the selvage of the fabric this is usually used when you need a very sturdy strong grain and it usually runs up and down the body so I'll turn it like this so it usually runs up and down the body so this could be the center back of your skirt it could be 
the center front of your skirt you know you follow this line up and down it could be the center of a bodice like this the center of a bodice like this so whether it's single layer or double layer I'm following the length wise grain now this fabric is striped so you get the effect immediately this pattern for instance let me get this out of the way this pattern for instance was cut on the lengthwise grain so you can see the stripes are vertical because the vertical stripes are parallel to the selvage so that gave us vertical stripes and it's a very sturdy look on the alternative instead of cutting on the selvage we can flip the opposite direction now what I'm doing is this is the width parallel to the other width you can put width to width line up my stripes you can put the width on the width place your pattern and cut it out so now I'm aligning the center of the pattern to the width previously we aligned the center of the pattern to the selvage but in this case I'm aligning the center of the pattern to the width and the effect of this you get this different so this was cut on the width and you can see the stripes are horizontal so that's another way which is in comparison this I'm going to remove this we have this this was cut on the lengthwise grain you can see it's vertical and this was cut on the crosswise grain and that is horizontal so that is another way you try the crosswise grain should wrap around your body but if you cut the center of your pattern along it you can see it changes the shape of the pattern and those are things you keep in mind but they are both sturdy grain lines they do not stretch so either way is okay depends on the look you're going for the third and final grain line is the bias now you can either cut it you can cut it on the fold like this you fold your fabric on the bias Place your pattern and you're going to get something that has diagonal lines. I didn't cut this skirt but you'll probably get something that has diagonal lines like this. You cut it on the fold or you can cut it two pieces. You can cut two pieces that are at 45 degrees from each other like this. 45. The center is along the bias. The center is along the bias and that will make you end up with something like this where you see I got a bias cut or bias cut these are two separate pieces which I pinned in the middle and you end up with like a chevron pattern like this so that's a nice effect of cotton and bias and this as you can see stretches a little so keep that in mind if you cut something on bias that grain line is going to stretch it's not sturdy like the other fabric so this is a quick reminder you can cut things on the bias be it center fold or two pieces or separate pieces you can cut things on the lengthwise grain like this but two separate pieces on that one hand we can actually cut things on the fold whether it's on the lengthwise grain whether it's on the crosswise grain so it's different combinations you try different things to get different looks so that is how you get these and you keep that in mind general principles to remember first of all fabric should be right sides facing when you're doing anything on the fold whether it's folded on the lengthwise grain or on the crosswise grain or on the bars right sides facing if you want to get mirrored pieces or symmetrical pieces that's the first thing now if you're cutting on your lengthwise grain which is parallel to your selvage this is number two you make sure if you're folding your fabric in half it should be selvage to selvage and the selvage should touch if you're just going to fold a section and you're not folding it completely in half the important thing is that I'm just going to fold a piece that is large enough for my pattern like this I just find a piece that is large enough for my pattern and I fold that but the rule you remember is that this selvage is parallel to this selvage yeah, let me open that 
that's all you have to remember. Selvage is parallel to selvage if you're cutting on the lengthwise grain. If you're cutting on the crosswise grain, if you're folding it in half, you make sure your width touches your width, and then you can place your pattern. Or if you're not using the whole fabric, you can just fold a section of it like this. If it has lines like this, you try and match up your lines. Place your pattern and cut, but always remember the width should be parallel to the width if you're cutting on the crosswise grain. If you're cutting on the bias, if you're cutting something on the bias, your bias, as we know, is at a 45 degree angle. Get a tape here. You have at a 45 degree angle. You can cut on a single layer and make sure your pattern is on the 45 degree angle, like this, or like this, that's okay. Or if you're cutting on a double layer, you can fold it and place it along the bias and so on and so forth. So those are things you should remember. So if you're cutting on a single layer, keep in mind you can fold any of the three grain lines. You can be on the cross grain like here, you can be on the length grain like here, or you can be on the bias right here. So that is works for the same thing whether you're on a single layer or all that. When aligning pattern pieces, you can use a ruler or your measuring tape to help you make sure that your pattern is straight. In this case, I have stripes. I can just follow the stripe, but depending on your fabric, you might want to use a measuring tape or a ruler. All I have to do is make sure it's the same distance from here to here and from here to here. So here we have an inch. Uh, and now I know it's straight or from the same distance as the grain line when you're aligning your pattern. We'll go into this more when we start drafting. We just have to make sure the same distance from here to here and I adjust it and I'll know it's straight. So you use your tape to make sure it's straight while you're doing this because you might not be working with stripes. It could be flowered or plain fabric. Now let's quickly talk about directional fabrics. If you have fabric like this that has a print that faces a particular direction, you can see the horse's heads are up here, which means this should be up and this should be down. You should keep that in mind when you're cutting. So if this was my skirt piece, I'll make sure the horse's heads are up on the skirt piece and down to the bottom. And any other piece that you're cutting on a dress or what have you should be the same thing. They should all face the same direction. If I decide that the head of the horse should be up, then for all the pieces, the head of the horse should be up so that you get a uniform symmetrical piece. This same thing applies to stripes, to flowers, to zigzags, whatever patterns on your fabric. You should make sure they always face the same direction, whatever direction you've chosen to use so that it's uniform. Finally, another thing we should keep in mind you can choose to cut one piece at a time, the way I was showing, or you can fold your whole fabric in half and align your pieces as you need to. Like, I'm keeping in mind the ones that should be on the fold, like my two front pieces. My two front pieces are on the fold on this edge. These pieces are going to be double but separate, like my back pieces, because there's going to be a zipper. So you can actually arrange all your pieces on your fabric for use. So that is also allowed. You don't, you don't have to cut it one at a time. It really depends on the fabric you're using and other factors you keep in mind or how complicated the pattern is. Sometimes something as simple as this, you can just put everything at once, pin them down and cut them and then you're ready to go.